Hey everybody, Pastor Jeff again. Let's pick up on Romans and we're going to start at Romans chapter 11, verse 11. And so it says there, Paul writes in 11 and 11 says, So I asked, did they stumble in order that they might fall? By no means. Rather, through their trespass, salvation has come to the Gentiles so as to make Israel jealous. So um, this is part of God's plan, and he knew all along that his chosen people, the Israelites, would, 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 would fall um, and would stumble over the Messiah, um, but not to completely fall away. There would always be that remnant. And so rather, uh, their trespasses uh, against salvation, because of their trespasses, it opened the door for the Gentiles to come to God. And in order to make uh, Israel jealous, because even though the Israelites reject Jesus, there's part of them, undoubtedly, by the scripture implies, there's part of them that, that says they recognize Jesus as the Messiah. And yet, here we are, 2,000 years later, and we still don't have a Messiah. No doubt they long for a Messiah. Because here they are, they, if you look at Israel today, it's, it's constantly under threat of attack uh, by all the Arab nations around them. They have turmoil and trouble within. They don't even own the, the mount, the temple mount, uh, the, the Dome of the Rock from the Muslims uh, is up there. And, and so I imagine there's a part of them, and, and we must believe the scripture, that to make Israel jealous, they... They, 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 they look at, no doubt, the Christian's belief in Jesus Christ as the Messiah. And part of them longs for their Messiah. And so, and, and that could, in a way, I'm sure, bring, bring some to find and know Jesus. Because as, as that feeling enters into them and, or, and God picks at them and the Holy Spirit deals with them, some of them, do find Jesus. Now it goes on in 12 and says, now if their trespass means riches for the world and if their failure means riches for the Gentiles, how much more will their full inclusion mean? And so here's Paul's point. If their trespasses, if their failings to see Jesus uh, their, as a Messiah, as their failings to love God means riches to the world, in other words, broader, broader means and a way and a pathway for Gentiles to be saved, if their failure means riches for the Gentiles, how much more will their full inclusion mean? In other words, how much more would um, uh, <clears throat> that if, if, if they were to come back to God, wouldn't, wouldn't that be such a blessing upon the world itself? And so it's not God's plan to push out the Israelites. It never, never, that's not the plan. The Israelites are still the chosen people of God. Except now, spiritually, the Israelites are those that accept Jesus Christ. And so there, are, there is a remnant of the Israelites that have accepted Jesus. And, uh, but also now, Gentiles can be grafted in, can become a part of that family, can be part of, become a part of Israel. And then those that reject the Messiah that are, that are true Israelites in the flesh, they're cut off because of their rejection. Paul, Paul talked about that. And so, so if, if the trespass of the Israelites to reject the Messiah could mean such a blessing to the world, to the Gentile world, how much more now, today, and in Paul's time, and in even our time, how much more would it be a blessing to the world if the Israelites were to come into the knowledge of Jesus Christ as the Messiah? It would be a great, great thing. So it goes on in 13, it says, Now I am speaking to you Gentiles. And as much then as I am apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry in order, it says in 14, somehow to make my fellow Jews jealous and thus save some of them. So he's hoping that as he ministers to the Gentiles and the Gentiles begin to come to know Jesus as the Messiah, that they would bring about, again, that, that burning inside the Israelites' chests and to, in their hearts that would long for the Messiah and that longing for the Messiah would send them down a pathway where their hearts would begin to seek God and they would recognize that Jesus 
See, because as soon as that heart, as soon as a man's heart, as soon as a person's heart begins to want to seek God for the truth, God will start revealing that truth to them. And so somehow, maybe their jealousy would bring about that burning in their heart to seek the truth of God, and they would find Jesus Christ as the Messiah. And in 15, it says, For if their rejection means the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance mean but life from the dead? And so, again, Paul's making this point. Yes, the Israelites, so many of them rejected, rejected Jesus. But that opened the door for the Gentiles. How much more, again, Paul makes the point, how much more if, if they're now, they're accepting of Jesus Christ. What a blessing that would be for the world that the Israelites were to become, would come back in a flock in numbers to accept Jesus. How much more would that mean to the world? How much more would that mean to God? How much, what would that do as a revival upon the planet? And so that's where Paul's hope was, is that somehow his ministry to the Gentiles would actually draw in some of his kinsmen, some of the Israelites that had rejected Jesus. And what, and what a great hope that is. And see, that's a, that's a hope you know, that we should all have. And, and maybe not exactly like, but how much can your own salvation be as a witness to those around you? How much can your own salvation be a witness to your unsaved family members? How much can your own salvation and love of God be a witness to your neighbors and your friends and those you love? See, Paul's passion burned for the Israelites. And we saw that when he said, I, I would almost give my own salvation that they could be saved. I would almost give my own life that they could be saved. His passion burned for the Israelites. Where If your passion burns for those around you who aren't saved, uh, maybe your salvation and your the reshaping of your life and the changes that God makes in your life, how much... Could that maybe be a witness uh, to those you love, those unsaved friends and loved ones? Amen. And tomorrow we'll pick up at verse 16 of chapter 11. Thank you.